Global War 36 enthusiast here with a video about understanding strategic naval movement. Strategic naval movement occurs during the non-combat movement phase and essentially allows naval transports to have longer range than they normally would. Each national reference sheet tells you the number of strategic naval moves a particular nation has and some strategic objectives give you bonus strategic naval movement. For example, the sun never sets gives Great Britain uh, plus one strategic naval uh, capacity. Uh, what happens is you have to start at a naval facility and the type of naval facility that you're adjacent to affects your range. If you're starting at a major port, major dockyard, major shipyard, then Normally, this naval transport would have a move of three, right? Two uh, for its base, plus one for the major uh, naval facility. But with strategic naval movement, it would have a range of five. Uh, let's say that Great Britain had the capacity of three from Sun Never Sets. They could pick up two um, infantry here from South Africa, move five spaces. You have to end at another naval facility. It doesn't need to be a major naval facility. Uh, but you have to end your movement at a, another naval facility and drop off those units in the same land zone. You, with normal non-combat movement, you could pick up guys and drop them off in two different friendly land zones, but with strategic naval movement, you got to uh, drop off those guys in the same place. You can pick up um, your units from two different places, um, but you have to, every time you pick someone up, it, they have to be at a naval facility. So for example, this uh, naval transport in normal non-combat movement could pick up one infantry from South Africa and one medium armor from Cape Town and then uh, move three spaces and drop them off somewhere. But with strategic naval movement, if, it, if this naval transport wanted to pick up this medium armor, it would have to move to C-Zone A-54 and be adjacent to this a minor dockyard in order to do that. Um, you, the units that you can carry are land units and strategic rockets. You would move, let's say you're moving five spaces, one here to I-3, two to I-4, three to I-7, four to I-12, five to I-11, and then let's say that you dropped off your two infantry here in Burma. Um, when that happens, you can't go in port somewhere else. If you had dropped off the two infantry in Calcutta, then you could go in port in Calcutta. But if you drop off in a place that doesn't have a major naval facility, you can't go in port somewhere else. The only place you can go in port is that particular land zone where you dropped the units off. If uh, you start at a minor a naval facility. That's a bad example here because there's because there's a major port here. But uh, let's say that you started your uh, movement. Um, <laughs> you started your movement at a place, Seychelles. Let's say the the Italians owned Tanganyika, uh, and the British were starting here. Um, then they would only have a strategic naval move of. Um, in this example, this is not. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm making an example on the fly, but if you had a minor port, it gives you plus one uh, strategic naval movement. Major's giving you a plus two, so you would get to move three. So normally you'd only get to move two, but with uh, strategic naval movement, you could move three. Let's look over here at an example in uh, New Zealand. If you, uh, when you're performing strategic naval movement, you can never move through uh, a sea zone that has a enemy surface warship, non-submerged submarines, or aircraft on map. And you can't start your uh, strategic naval movement in a sea zone that is enemy occupied. So normally this naval transport during non-combat movement, it, it's not a problem. It can just move out into this sea zone. You would need three or more surface warships in order to blockade this port and then force this guy to fight its way out, which it, it can't do. But um, with strategic naval movement, even if this destroyer weren't there and it were just a an American naval transport, that prevents this Japanese naval transport from performing strategic naval movement because you can't start your uh, strategic naval movement 
from an enemy occupied C zone. So um, there are there's another exception about strategic naval movement, which is uh, declaration of war. You can't declare war uh, on when someone's performing strategic naval movement through your sea zone. So let's say that America's at full production and they're allowed to declare war on Japan, uh, but they're at peace for some strange reason. And then uh, Japan could perform strategic naval movement from this uh, port. They could leave to here and America cannot declare war on them during strategic naval uh, movement. Um, note that also you can't carry, you, if, you're, if you're a naval transport that's carrying aligned land units or, or a strategic rocket, um, you can't conduct strategic naval movement at all um, with that particular naval transport. There's a couple other little rules I want to point out. One is that in version 4.3, there's going to be a requirement that uh, any naval facilities that are being used uh, to conduct strategic naval movement must be in supply. So that's a good habit to get into because uh, we know that rule is coming. And um, strategic or uh, improved logistics gives plus two strategic naval movement and plus one strategic naval movement range. So if you're leaving from a minor port or if you're adjacent to a minor port to start, your range would be four with the naval transport. If you were moving from uh, a major naval facility, then your range would actually be six. So that makes improved logistics really helpful for conducting strategic naval movement. Strategic naval movement is a really important part of the game. Um, it's it's a, something that uh, can make you do things that you, you otherwise couldn't do. Uh, you can surprise people with it. If you have any questions about strategic naval movement, leave them in the comments below.